Good morning. Hopefully you're having a great week. Thank you for tuning in. We've got another episode of the Social Mag podcast for you. This is Brian Abdallah. I'm your host. I've got a chance to sit down with Chris Team of Capital Exotic Fish. He manages this location in DC. I met Chris earlier this year as I was venturing out and about in DC like I always do. Came across Capital Exotic Fish walked in there saw these great amazing tanks it's one of those places that just brings a unique experience for sure they carry exotic fish of course aqualife creatures that you probably have never seen before when i walked in there i saw an alligator gar i didn't even know what that was and then i saw and i couldn't stop staring at it it's just crazy Uh, but from the moment i met chris i just knew that he loved sharing information and educating people about nature, fish, aquascaping, paludariums. Uh, He is a holder of unique facts. Um, He's an interesting person and you have to get to know him. This is just the intro though. I was on the drive home after this podcast and I was already thinking, dude, I got to get this guy back on here. He's super cool. Uh, But hopefully, you know, you enjoy this one. If you like what you hear and you want more episodes, do me a favor, please leave a review on the podcast and share it with your friends. One of the main goals I have in life is to meet every cool person on this planet. I know, I know, it's going to be crazy, Uh, but reviews help me reach new people to interview and meet um, and get the word out there. So I would greatly appreciate that. Um, but here it is. Here's Chris team. Enjoy the episode. All right, cool. All right. Welcome to another episode of the social mag podcast. We're here with Chris team. Uh, happy to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is amazing. This is awesome. Uh, I love how, uh, we're enclosed with fish in your the aquariums here i know right it's just nothing better just to put you at relax you know and just to have a good time yeah it's kind of nice to to like start off your day with a podcast too yeah right I, I love it you know and we're sitting here in the chill zone this is what we designed it for usually we got reggae music playing and <laughs> everyone could just sit down and relax uh dc is a unique spot where it's a very high stressful live to work not work to live yeah kind of place, so. yeah really is. and you're in the thick of it this is this is like you're, you're in the middle of a neighborhood next to one of the busiest streets of uh, wisconsin yeah uh, right here at embassy road yeah yeah why don't you introduce yourself yeah so uh my name is chris team i'm the general manager of capital exotic fish uh i've been keeping fish since i was about ooh, five or six with uh reptiles and amphibians and uh Graduated originally in commercial aviation. I was a pilot and I uh, couldn't go the military route like I was wanting to. So I went with my next passion, which was animals. And from there, I've been working at different AZA institutes and just leveling up my game until uh, now bring it to the uh, residential side. It's just wow. sadly a little bit more money in that versus yeah. $16 an hour at 35 years old working at a zoo. So <laughs> hey, that's not a bad life, man. Yeah. Being outside working. What? So you're a pilot. That's pretty cool. Do you still have your license? I do. Uh, it's not too hard to renew it. All I got to do is just uh, three takeoffs and three landings <laughs> during the day and the night. And they renew it for like another, uh, depends on if I'm doing just private yeah. or commercial. Commercial, you got to go like do it way too often to yeah. keep it up. But yeah, like if you just said, hey, you know, let's just have a, a boys weekend getaway. I could go renew my license get my medical you know card back and then uh we'd be good to go that's hilarious so when's the last time you flew uh about a year and a half ago okay yeah wow, that's so crazy yeah. that's so interesting i didn't know that um yeah so let's talk about a little a bit like your your passion for nature like so you grew up in down south i did yes sir so, uh, around south alabama right there gulf shores Florida, right there by pensacola florida so I grew up getting the chill by the beach and watching the Blue Angles uh, train and their their type yeah. formations that they do. It's pretty cool. So, dude, that's awesome. Isn't there like military out there too? Right? Yeah, you got Pensacola. It's uh, one of the academies, I guess, for the Navy that yeah. most uh, most people recruits going in will do some stint. They're kind of like Fort Benning, Georgia, is for the Army. Yeah, so, yeah. And then there's a, a there's a school out there as well. Couple, right? Oh yeah, there's a, yeah there's a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so. From there, like, have you always liked 
nature and animals like I mean, yeah so uh my my late grandfather uh he was definitely the one that got me into animals and nature uh he i remember one of my first books he got me was a field guide to how to properly identify birds and then reptiles and amphibians um and then it just evolved from there i started off with uh turtles at the age of three and then my uh the turtles we moved outside and we had one feeder goldfish left that made it his name was spooky and spooky evolved it into where my mom and dad got into koi and so like now they have their own they're getting ready to retire and do their own uh that cricket man <laughs> it's kind of, yeah i don't know you you, should, you guys should be able to hear that it's kind yeah. of funny um but now they're doing their own koi farm and like i said i just went zoological got an amazing chance to work with black rhinos penguins wow. elephants leopards lions tigers oh my god uh sloth bears i mean it was a amazing experience just to to see all the amazing creatures and just to educate uh you know on, on better conservation efforts and uh ways that we can try to protect all the animals like nutella stuff like that we like to enjoy it's a nice tasty snack but little do we know that you know the palm oil is the cause for orangutans and the sumatran mm -hmm. and rhinos to just disappear no way yeah i had no yeah clue, so yeah uh, think about that again as you're eating <laughs> nutella yeah palm oil it's uh it's just this little ingredient but uh if you go and look they're just like deforesting and the orangutans are about extinct and nutella is wow. one of the main companies so yeah no way that's yeah. insane I, I rarely eat Nutella these days, but I know that's like, they sell it by the freak. It's bigger now. You, yeah. You can get the massive uh, containers of those. Things. Yeah, I even had to break away from my favorite candy and, you know, just trying to, little things like that. I mean, it's just little conscious efforts that we can do to, to help. And, um, you know, mm -hmm. now from a business standpoint, I get to preach education and, you know, about these aquarium plants and fish. and Yeah. I've even got a aquarium plant back in the back that we over har harvested because it looks so unique and now the plant's almost extinct in the in the wild but yet we still have it in, growing in the aquarium tree. That is so crazy. Yeah, it's cool. So like uh, thanks you for your introduction. That was really yeah. cool. I didn't know that about you. Um so I've known Chris for like a couple months actually. And I want to share like how we kind of met. Um first off, we're here at Capital Exotic Fish. This is a unique place, man. And um i've never seen anything like this like i'm sure these types of rare fish stores with exotic fish people that really care it's very rare throughout the country i'm sure it's a small world i i take it so when i saw uh capital exotic fish i'm like capital exotic first off exotic got my attention i'm like what exotic fish what the hell is that yeah and the first thing i did i went on your instagram and I was, and you guys were sharing a bunch of stuff. I was like, dude, this is really rad. And I was like, we, like, we got to go in. So me and my wife came in and you're just chilling here. It was actually super busy that day. It was on a Saturday. Um, and we were around and then I'm like, Hey, what's going on? You had your cameras, your lenses out on the couch. <laughs> you had your laptop. You're talking to customers. I'm like, that's gotta be the guy right there. <laughs> that's moving and shaking, uh, this place. It was great. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, Murray and Jake Liebman, the owners, they have a amazing business plan, and I'm just lucky enough to be the one to execute their ideas and uh, you know chase their down their dreams, and it matched up with mine. So it's a it's a great pairing, and love the team that we've built and developed here. And uh, yeah, sometimes it's a little surreal that you're like, I get to play with fish and do this for a living. This is awesome. And the cool thing about it is it's it's always changing. Like I feel like you guys are are never repeating the same day like just going in all right selling and leaving you're like moving stuff around you're you're talking with your customers and clients it's like never yeah. the same thing like i think this aquarium right here up front in the chill zone uh you know we we're trying to educate people on the different scapes uh you know we're really big into aqua excuse me we're really big into aquascaping uh aquascaping um for those of y'all just listening um, it's essentially living art using fish in, a, in aquarium plants and uh, you know it's a passion of mine and we've kind of let that passion spread it, of course COVID it was a unique year for almost 2020 and so many people got into the hobby and uh, so it's just fun to watch people expand and develop their hobby and turn it into something you know truly into a work of art and um, you know we like to 
like to showcase that, show different styles. Um, but, you know, we're also unique in the sense that we're the only fish store in D.C. Uh, you know, and we're trying to give better education than what you would find at that Pet Smart and Petco. Uh, I was part of that generation growing up where I got my fish mostly from Walmart and uh, Pet Smart Petco, and they don't really give you the best advice or set you up for success. They're more just interested in taking your money and run and we're just doing a little bit different you know it's a it's a different time we want to be here to coach we do free classes stuff like that so it's pretty cool yeah and what's interesting is if you you guys need to stop by in here there's insane fish you can see behind me right here oh yeah I, this is the first time i've seen it when i walked in this so, is in, and it's grown since i've seen it oh yeah she's uh she's definitely big we were hoping it was going to be a male but she is definitely a female um, so for those of y'all, I don't know if they can see the camera or not, uh, but behind me, we've got an alligator gar. Uh, it's a unique genetic, uh, rarity, uh, off of that species. It's a amelanistic. So therefore all the pig color pigments just went white. Uh, so she's called a platinum alligator gar, but, uh, since she is a female, she will quickly get upwards of five, six feet. And then after she reaches that sexual maturity age, she'll slow down to, essentially she can almost get up to 10 feet like you can you see in the rivers in texas i doubt because she's in the aquarium she'll get that big but she will easily get six seven feet no problem that is crazy what do you feed that thing uh so you know we we don't really like feeding live foods uh you know it's it's important for them to to you know not do their nature uh, but most of what she's eating is frozen silver side fish or frozen tilapia mm. um occasionally you know we get a rowdy kid maybe no just kidding <laughs> <laughs> toss in there that's funny um yeah that's so interesting like those are some of the fishes that i see and if you guys check out their social media presence um i was in here filming uh you getting a shipment and that was pretty cool seeing the new new different life yeah actually creatures. i think you were here when we got the mud skippers in yeah 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 and then they, now you get to see them in the display tank it's pretty cool yeah and everything here is like uh, they take really good care of the educate. Every time I come here, you're always educating and, and sharing all sorts of new information for me. So I mean, I'm always educating myself. I mean, there's uh, <laughs> there's more than one way to do things, breed things. But, you know, with me being conservation, I'm really into the success. I mean, you know, if you went to a, a place to adopt a cat or a dog and you kept on coming in every week to get a new cat or dog because they died, people view that a little differently. The fish are living things, too. We want to make sure, like... I, I told people up front, if they're starting a new tank, hey, give it a month before you get fish. Let's just do this the right way. I'd rather you not come in here as much because your fish are living versus you're in here every week. Um, because, again, some of these fish are almost extinct in the wild. Uh, in fact, there is one African cichlid here that we've got that is extinct, and it's only still kept around because of the hobby. Um, um, and just zoological institutes can't do it all. So, What, uh, what type of customers do you guys get? Man anything and everything yeah. uh i mean we've got some i've got an amazing i got i call them my 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 future future employees i've got some amazing crew that uh we've got some eight and nine year olds who blew me away by how much they already know about fish and um you know they're working on, i'm working on them to you know help be sustainable get them into the hobby so our guppies mollies things of this nature are actually being bred by mm. eight and ten year old kids Incredible. Uh, and so we're getting them started young and then you know we go all the way up to ambassadors for you know foreign countries that we've got as clients so it's uh that's what i love about dc it's a very unique market you never know yeah what you're gonna get when, when how did you end up in dc i don't think i ever asked you this oh man uh <laughs> so for another episode <laughs> yeah First, first time I came uh, was seven years ago. I was fresh out of South America, moved back. I was living in Raleigh, North Carolina. My mom and dad had relocated here. Uh, ooh, I think they moved here year of snow again. So that was what, 2010, yeah. 2011? Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, and then so I, I came to visit. And of course, I, at the time I was 21. My mom and dad were like, we miss you. Let's go. What would it take to get you to come back? And I said, well, I'll tell you what, while I'm here visiting, if I get a job, I'll move up here. And dang it, if I didn't get a job, I was uh, over working bartending at the Majestic Cafe in Old Town Alexandria. Yes. So that was uh, that's, that was my extent to the my first trip here. And then uh, my kids live here. So coming back to try to get a little closer to them now. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. So it's a pretty cool experience. And like I said, I, it's amazing to get to 
play with fish, like instead of having yeah. to do a job that you maybe don't enjoy as much to it, make it it's work. In, it's incredible because your personality just is so vibrant. You know, when you walk in and like when you talk to someone, you just know that they know what they're talking about. You're comfortable, they're knowledgeable, and you just feel that. And I think that's part of the major reason like this brings this place to life, even with your employees. You know what I oh, mean? Yeah. They're great. They're yeah, like, they are. Uh, that's why I, I couldn't be happier with the team. And if, if it wasn't for our customers and the team that we've got, it's not a I effort, it's a we effort. And everyone chips in, does their part yeah. to, to keep it going. So, yeah. So, before we move on from Capital Exotic Fish, like, what, um, I always have a hard time when people ask, like, dude, what is that fish store? So, when people ask you, like, what is Capital Exotic Fish, what do you typically say? Well, uh, What's funny is, and we still get occasionally some up until I finally spent the money and we put some signage on the front window, but we had people coming in here and they were asking for like frozen Chilean sea bass because they thought we were a fish market. I'm like, no, we were in the business of the living, not the dead, <laughs> uh, you know, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just been a cool experience with people coming in. Uh, we're always encourage people to. Just come in and look treat us like an aquarium you know yeah. uh that's why unlike your traditional mom and pop stores we've got two areas that you can just sit down on the sofa relax unwind decompress um you know we're we're about building the community more yeah. so than just seeing you out the door yeah and it's funny because you guys live right next door to like a, a school a little yeah park. kinder care yeah so sometimes we get the i call it the uh the uh, kid train because uh, they all come in single file line through here and the, get to uh, look at the fish but you know and then sometimes the kids who really love it come in to see max to get you know dog, love from yeah. max my dog or they'll just look at all the fish and you know they're they're pointing asking what type of fish and you know they're it's cool to get to see the different age groups come in you know we're uh we want to keep it alive we want to make sure everyone's doing uh great sustainable projects and um sorry that we got two fish uh, mating and trying to breed here in the tank right now as we're speaking. I was just <laughs> I watching those placos, yeah. That's very cool. So that's what, uh, you know, you, give them a, you set up the animals for what they want naturally in the wild. Mother Nature does the rest. It's really not that hard. It's just about picking, finding out what, what environment you're going yeah. to replicate and let's replicate it, and then the, the fish will do their own. And you, speaking of mating, you, you have... Uh, what do you call it? Some new, some babies over there, right? Oh yeah, we got lots of different babies. Yeah. yeah, so we got some baby discus, which are my favorite. They're tattooed on my arm. Um, they were really cool to get to collect down in Peru and Brazil. Um, they're just basically this big, colorful dinner plate. Yeah, I mean they're just round like a dinner plate. That sounds just like in the name, uh, but they, you know, they've been line bred to come in different colors, except for purple. So it's uh really cool to get those. Uh, we've got. Uh, some different types of placos, breeding, guppies, um, all kinds of things. That's awesome. Um, so I do want to talk about uh, your foot photography in like South America because I thought that was cool. Like, so, so talk to me how how did you and decide to go to South America first off? Well, I, I'm not advising uh, <laughs> anyone to follow what I did, uh, <laughs> but perfect. I'm, I literally got out of college and I was just like, you know what? I don't want to be this person traveling the world at age 70, 80, where I've got to have a cane or a walker. Uh, I'd rather just live life to the fullest and uh, do it early. And so I literally did the most irresponsible thing coming out of college. I sold everything. Yeah. I like, sold the car, sold my laptop. And I told my parents, I said, I'll see you when the money runs out. And I. All in all, you know, after I sold like the TV, the Xbox, the car, I was able to get like $5,500. Wow. Uh, so my first piece of equipment I bought was a Nikon D90. Um, I had a Tamron 90 millimeter macro lens. I had a 70 to 300 millimeter lens. And then I had my just the regular 18 to 105 millimeter. Um, and I had like after my plane ticket that... My parents gave me uh, another thousand dollars just as a graduation gift from college, and so uh, I made about three thousand dollars last two and a half years. Wow! Uh, it's a uh, it was a cool experience just to to get to go. Uh, definitely learned some li life lessons down there. And wait, you were there for two and a half years? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I was just bartending at different <laughs> hostels. I found out that hostels is basically like a dorm. You sleep yeah. on bunk beds with uh, people traveling the world. It wasn't that bad. You got like a locker with yeah. like, your own master lock you sure. can put on. But 
yeah they uh they said hey can you work from like six o'clock to midnight bartending and then you're free to go and i did that and then i found wow. uh there's a place in lima uh lima peru uh called mira flores is a district uh, but when i first got to lima it's you know lima's actually in the top 10 deadliest cities in the world and i was going to the, like the they uh the you know they, they got like the shacks up there on the hills and stuff like that that you can clearly see and you would just hear gunshots stuff like that but it's it was such a big city that i learned if you took a 45 minute taxi ride so it'd be like us taking a taxi ride from dc going all the way to fredericksburg yeah was this like nicer district uh called parque kennedy um in me flores and it was right there by the coast so it was great surfing and it was a fun time and i just uh enjoyed traveling meeting people and found ways to make money while i was going That's and so cool. got to do the off beaten uh i guess the yeah. versus like the tourist traps so how did yeah. that change you think because like two and a half years is a long time seeing culture people coming back it had to be like surreal kind of right yeah to be honest i mean i i came back and i looked at the lifestyle here and it was just like why why work you know day and night doing something that you don't enjoy doing when you know um and so i really just i used that opportunity to uh, go on so besides fish probably my next biggest passion is poison dart frogs mm. um, It actually <laughs> saved my life down there. I, I got stung by an assassin caterpillar um, Yeah, oh, like I said, we could we could go on about my journeys <laughs> down there um, Yeah, like I said, I wouldn't recommend it, but like I was just this guy Meeting people a couple Americans would point me to people they would know and trust who have lived down there and I'd just be hopping on this random boat with somebody and uh, was I failed Spanish, but I learned so much down there when I was down there. But I, I was this guy who, like, this gringo down there who was just, like, speaking Spanglish, you know, trying to get by with someone who's, like, fluent, and I'm just getting on this random kind of weird boat going upriver into the Amazon out into the middle of nowhere. Um, but, you know, it was a, it was also a humbling experience. It was, uh, I was fortunate enough not to have anything too severe happen, and, uh, crazy, crazy moments getting to catch piranhas with the native Indians uh, down there, or the native, uh, the indigenous people down there. And uh, it was, I guess the other cool, surreal thing was I came back and uh, it was right around when Avatar, you know, Avatar yeah. just came yeah. out. And uh, I actually got picture with the same chief that James Cameron was with because mm -hmm. Avatar is based off of the Belo Monte Dam in Brazil, um, which off of the Xingu River. Um, and it was really cool experience just to learn about all that and how modern society can sometimes upplace, you know, Native Americans yeah. and culture. And um, I don't know, it was it was a cool experience. I didn't really want to come back, to be honest. That's crazy. Are, have you gone back or no? No, uh, sadly, no, I haven't. Uh, I've yeah. gone to some other countries. Uh, it will always always hold a heart, like a place special place yeah. in my heart. Um, I had the opportunity to go in all, this this past month, but. Uh, with it being a new store and us working out kinks, we're getting ready to do salt water. I, I just needed to focus here. Next year, I'll uh, I'll try to play more and work less. So. That's awesome, dude. That is crazy. How'd you get stung by this caterpillar? Uh, you know, you're just walking through the Amazon brush and you got stuff falling on you. Like it was cool. It was cool. There's actually butterflies that prefer to um, drink your sweat off of your arm versus nectar. Wow. Uh, but there was this caterpillar, and it was just like this little fluffy hairy caterpillar you know and don't think anything of it because like here in the states we don't have anything and, and when i flicked it off it shot out its hairs and there's like a there's not an antidote known but i was fortunate enough to be living with indigenous uh where there's so much hidden wonders between the animals and the plants um and just based off of this sole experience i would say my conservation efforts just really quadrupled um but he knew exactly what to do so he tied down this uh it sounds it sounds worse than it is but they uh they tied down this little frog i mean the frog was uh mm. about the size of my thumbnail no it wasn't that big but it excreted this toxin in it, and then the the toxin in there oh it, it was horrible experience it like he burnt me in my shoulder uh we peeled off the skin and then he rubs this toxin in, and i just felt instantly sick i could see sweat coming out of all my pores really nauseous but then the next morning i was alive and uh it to put it to surreal the same time i was there there was a canadian girl she was 21 she actually died because she stepped on one barefoot and she yeah. actually died so wow um, these little hidden wonders like that you know uh 
uh, since you saw me last, I actually got the protein of the uh, the toxin. I saw that. Um, I was like, that's that looks new. I was gonna ask yeah. you about that. Yeah, so I, I just got that, and that's actually the protein um, from uh, Betra toxin. It comes from a poison dart frog uh, that they isolated the proteins to create morphine. Um, oh, wow! But it one drop is strong enough to kill a hundred humans. So it's this crazy. Is wild. And you're talking about a two inch frog, and one drop from its toxins could secrete. So that's where. The name Poison Arrow Frogs got their name was because wow. of these darts. That is incredible. Well, glad you're with us, dude. Yeah, what yeah. The heck? Oh, yeah. So, what I, did your parents say? Did you tell them? Nah, to be honest, I, my parents know I, uh, <laughs> I live life to its fullest, and you know, it's, we're never promised tomorrow, and I uh, probably don't help my chances with that either. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, I'm just that guy. It's just, you know, life's short. I want to do all, yeah. ex experience everything. So, dude, um, that is amazing. Wow. What a so what type of food did you eat when you were with the indigenous people? Oh man. People? Uh I think the weirdest one was but like I had someone there who translated for me, but the mm -hmm. chief of the tribe, the of the Kayapo in, in Indians down there, um, he handed me a fish head. It was a peacock bass. We yeah. even sell them here. Yeah, like yeah, they're yeah. just a big game fish, but they get huge in the Amazon. Great to eat. But the delicacy was the eyeball. Oh nice. And that was uh was like gummy bears. <laughs> That was probably my weirdest experience. Uh, I think the other one, you know, we look at the way we eat food. I remember we had this piece of meat, and it was just cooking on top of this tin roof of our boat for like two or three days just in the sun. I mean, it was just full sun, and then we boiled it and cooked it. And like I said, it, surprised I didn't get dysentery or something else while there. It was like, <laughs> wow. But it was, it was cool. Like, we, uh, we traveled upriver like two days um you gotta go at the right time of the year because you know they got a wet season and a dry season that's it um and we actually camped on this random island they called it snake island was the translation but we just i slept in a hammock put a mosquito net over me woke up but it was cool going out there with flashlights you see all the black caiman's eyes around you and oh wow it was uh i think that was probably my favorite experience of the whole entire trip was this this trip i'm talking about because I woke up in the morning, it's a gorgeous sunrise. You know, there's just no, no police sirens, no car horns. You don't even hear a car passing by, not even a boat. I mean, you're just really out in nature. Uh, and it was a nice, foggy, steamy morning. And I'm out there fishing and caught a, a black diamond piranha, actually. And that's what we ate for breakfast. It wow. was pretty cool. So no cell phone, I bet, right? Yeah, no. No, that was before. I guess I, I might take it with me now, now yeah. that there's common to have international phone call but yeah no before even just to get a text message it was like six bucks just to open and read a text message with yeah, international right. rates so wow that's incredible that was man. yeah it's been 13 years so i'm ready to go back but it was a it was an amazing experience that is so so badass that's amazing um gosh so i feel old now saying 13 years ago <laughs> dude time flies man i do yeah i, I tell you it, it's crazy but you're right you got to do things that you know, I, I, you saying that literally like just struck a chord in my head. I was like, I don't want to be old walking around. Like, yeah. Like, you know, I, I really want to go to Africa. I still got Australia. So it's hard to pick these places. But now that I've, I'm older, it's harder to get away too. Yeah. You know, and so uh, I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to try to do it like on the regular, at least once every five years, yeah. you know, and just take two or three weeks off yeah. you know it's good to have a sabbatical and get away and so yeah i need to do that I, and the sad part is i got family in the philippines and i haven't i rarely go back home so i was like i need to go back there okay yeah. it's a long flight it's it, but it's worth it you gotta spend like two weeks there if you're gonna go yeah exactly like yeah. like uh, that's what i enjoyed was just okay i'll see you when the money runs out it's not the most responsible thing but it was definitely the best experience i could um, you know ever wish for because there was so much you got to see and do and there was still so much i didn't do that i wish i did while i was there so so where in south Amer america did you go you probably covered like the entire continent i would imagine no actually i just stuck to peru and brazil um okay. but while i was bar bartending in lima i met these uh this billionaire's uh kid who was just staying in the hostel yeah and you know they were like oh well, hey we're going to colombia for two weeks you should come i'm like man i'd love to but look at my tip jar man like i just can't go like i'm trying to stretch out my experience he's like i tell you what Here's $600. Come with us. I was like, sold. When are we leaving? 
like that kind of thing and then i'm like you know now in today's society you hear about like just all the trafficking and everything else yeah I'm like, oh my gosh what was i thinking but yeah yeah you go back and it's like what the heck yeah i don't like i said i don't recommend what i did but it was a cool experience and i was just fortunate to survive it <laughs> it's one of those things where you're traveling you go down a, uh, like an alley you're like yeah that was so cool and then the next day it was like something bad happened in that alley mm -hmm. yeah 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 <laughs> yeah oh that's so funny all right well i know you're busy so i'm gonna try to wrap this up i think this is one of the coolest podcast episodes i've ever talked, talked yeah man I'm, I, I love doing it and uh yeah like i said i'm uh i live life to its fullest and i'll regret it later you know kind yeah. of thing and so it's just uh been a fun amazing experience uh but you got to get out there to just experience nature side yeah. now i mean we're at the rate we're going i feel like we're we're no longer mammals we're becoming parasites to our planet and uh i definitely think there's a way we can coexist and make things work you know but sadly it's just those little small things of education and preserving and treating even like the fish as a living creature versus just a, a fish you know like you treat it like a cockroach if it was in your house it's like you know um so it's it's really cool getting the past along and uh, enjoy meeting people like yourself here and getting to work with you, partner up with y'all on for uh, doing some videos on social media, that's stuff fun. like yeah, that, that's doing fun. fun things. But, you know, what else better to do? Yeah, yeah. I guess um, just on the education part of things, like if someone wanted to get in, into fish or like starting an aquarium, you know, there's so many different types of aquariums. What would you, what, what's like the best advice you can give someone? Oh, man. Um, to be honest, patience. Uh, trial and error um yeah i didn't get to where i'm at with my knowledge without doing something stupid like anybody does getting into the hobby um there was times i killed fish because i forgot to dechlorinate you know it's just all about slowing down paying attention to the small details uh but uh as far as like if you're curious to learn more stuff like that definitely check us out on social media facebook uh instagram but also you can go to our website which is just capital exotic uh, we do two free classrooms a month so next month i'm talking about discus my favorite fish and then we're also talking uh about a paludarium which is like this whole entire slice of nature where you get the uh, aquatic part but it goes into the terrestrial part so yeah. we're going to use this this big display right here as the uh the foreground for that dude this place is really cool you guys gotta come check this out it, even if this is worth a drive to i know a lot of people like go from out of state to come visit this place yeah it's, it uh we, we when we brought in hip the uh he's a very well-known uh highest ranking ever aquascaper good friend of mine when we brought in hip from austin i had people come all the way down from like new york just to come down to see him and get this you know um i tried a bit like i said i've been in the hobby so i try to keep a lot of fish that you don't even find on like websites to order here and stock all the time so it's a it's really cool getting to hear people geek out over the stuff that they see here and it, it helps fuel my nerdiness inside me to keep bringing in all these unique animals this is awesome well hey i appreciate you um i know you you, get, you have a busy week and it's a monday too so i appreciate oh you yeah no anytime podcast, I, I, anything i can do to ever help you out uh greatly appreciate everything I appreciate and you, bro. thanks uh thanks again all right appreciate you bye bye